everyone. You mostly look like a black blob. Um, but that's cool, that's cool. Uh, I've taken my shoes off to make sure I don't trip over all the hazards up here, because they've really tried to make it an obstacle course. So, uh, so I'm Pamela, and I work for Khan Academy. And Khan Academy is a nonprofit that provides free educational content for people around the world. Um, and on Khan Academy, I create the programming curriculum and then engineer the platform that delivers that curriculum. Um, and I do that alongside John Resig, which maybe a couple of you guys have heard of. He's kind of a big deal. Um, and uh, it's pretty cool. We teach programming using JavaScript and processing JS, which is a library that uses a canvas tag to do drawing and animation. So it's a very visual way of learning JavaScript. Um, so we'll teach the concepts in these talk throughs. And then the students will do them in these coding challenges, like this one, which is a step-by-step -step challenge to fill in an ice cream cup with your favorite color ice cream, whatever. Mint is obviously the best. But, um, and we have these awesome mascots, like Hopper the beaver, who's named for, of course, General Grace Hopper. Uh, we have another mascot named Winston. He's, uh, he's four, only four ellipses, but he's, he's a whole lot of personality. He's crazy. Um, I dressed up like him for Halloween this year, or I did my best job at dressing up like him. I mostly just creeped out my colleagues a lot. <laughs> I also creeped out everybody on the Caltrain, um, and I did not get any dude's numbers from that. So just pro tip in case you're going to do that. Um, so anyway, today I want to talk about a hypothetical world, what it might look like. So in this world, every student would learn JavaScript in grade school. So if we're going to paint a picture of that world, we might make a timeline and say, OK, in a certain grade, that is when they would learn JavaScript 101. So what grade would that be? We have to answer the question, what's the earliest age you can learn JavaScript? Um, so let's ask you guys, so how many of you guys learned JavaScript when you were younger than 10 years old? OK, younger than 15? Younger than 20? <laughs> um, younger than 25? OK, how many of you guys think that you could have learned JavaScript when you were 13? OK, OK, you're pretty confident. So uh, we could you know, base it on what you guys say, but that's not very scientific. So <laughs> let's try and be uh, a little more scientific and try and use some stats. Um, we actually have hundreds of thousands of students that are learning JavaScript on Khan Academy. And it's pretty cool, because we can actually look at the stats to try and answer questions like this. So we can pose a question, how does age predict the success for a student that learns JavaScript on Khan Academy? Um, so we could look at the first coding challenge that they ever do, which is called the H for Hopper challenge. Um, there we go. And it's a step-by-step -step challenge where they have to write commands. Uh, they're not allowed to copy-paste. I disabled that. And so that means they have to figure out the difference between a colon and a semicolon, which is actually kind of tricky. Um, and they have to figure out the right numbers in order to draw three rectangles that form an H for Hopper. Um, so really, the concepts they're using is you know, statements, syntax, calling functions. Um, so we've had 330,000 students have started the challenge, which just means they've loaded the page. We don't really know if they intended to do it, but they loaded the page. Um, and only 13% of those we actually have age data for, because we don't require age. So we have 51,000 students that have started that challenge that have age data. So we can look at the completion rates for those 50,000 students and see what it looks like across the ages. So this graph actually starts from the left-hand side with age 8 and goes to the right-hand side with age 25. Um, and it goes from around 70% to around 86%. Um, and so you can see that the completion rate does actually vary across age, right? It starts off lower, and then it gets higher, and it kind of stables out um, there around like age 15. Um, and the interesting thing is, I also did these stats for gender, and female and male had the same completion rates, right? So we see a difference across ages, not across genders. That's pretty cool, just in case anyone was doubting that. I know it should be obvious, da da da. Um, but uh, so we definitely see a difference across ages. Um, and we can think, OK, what is the difference? Like, why is it that the 8-year-olds had a harder time than the 15-year-olds? So we could think maybe the difference is that conceptually, issuing a command is a hard concept to grasp. Um, but we could also think that you know, maybe just programming requires patience, and maybe they don't have patience, and they, have 80, you know, they, they, they just don't have the attention span for it, and they need something more entertaining or fast or something like that. Um, we could say it requires typing skills. Maybe a lot of them don't have the typing skills yet. Um, I did a usability study with a seven-year-old, and I sat down and I watched him. And the first question he had was, 
where is the special keyboard for programming? He thought that there would be a special keyboard for programming. I was like, no, 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 you can just use this one. It's cool, right? But just typing and typing in a code editor, that's something that's new and different. Um, it could also be the fact that we're using processing JS, which requires spatial reasoning. So you have to understand that there's this grid that goes from X and Y, and you have to come up with these numbers. And maybe that's a little hard for people that are younger, too. So these are all possible reasons why we could see the difference in the ages. Um, but we still have pretty good rates, right? So for 13-year-olds, 82% that loaded that challenge actually completed it, right? And the highest is 89%. So there's not actually that big of a difference between the two. So that's pretty cool. That's pretty heartening. We might think, OK, OK, cool. Maybe 13-year-olds, maybe, maybe all of them could learn JavaScript. Um, but this was a kind of simple challenge, right? Nothing very you know, kind of complex in terms of programming concepts. So we could get more complex, right? So we could look at the first logic challenge, which is a ways down in the curriculum like 60% through the curriculum. And this is a challenge where there's a bouncing ball, and they need to set up an if statement so that the ball bounces off the bottom and goes back up. So they just say, like, if y is greater than 400, then we decrease y. Um, and it's got two steps to this challenge. So they need to use if and comparators, and they need to understand how animation works in processing.js. So here, if we look at the stats, we see quite a bigger difference across the ages, right? Now, we have a much fewer students doing this one because we have a, a ton for the first one because of this hour of code thing that we did that a lot of students did. Here, we only have 18,000 students that have started this challenge and 5,000 of those with age. Um, so there's only like really 50 people who are eight-year-old that have started this. So take that with a grain of salt. But you do see there's a way bigger disparity across the ages here. Um, so we start with, you know, uh, like nine-year-olds are at like 57%, um, and 13-year-olds are like 73%, right? Um, and so as you can see, we compare the two. The concepts definitely seem to have gotten harder, right? Because that is the kind of it's the main difference is the concepts. Um, so we could say, well, maybe the concepts of conditionals and comparators are too difficult for younger children. Um, but it could also be that the the spatial reasoning has gotten harder, and also the temporal spatial reasoning, right? Because they have to for this particular challenge in processing JS, they have to understand how the animation loop works, and that the ball it goes up and down, and we call this draw function every frame, and da da da. So it could be possible that if we were teaching JavaScript conditionals in just a simple console.log kind of environment, maybe then they wouldn't have such a great age disparity. So we'd have to have two different curriculums to really compare and know. So we can't really, can't really know exactly for sure why we see this bigger age disparity. Um, but we do know that there is one, right? Um, but still, for 13-year-olds, 73% of them that opened that challenge completed it. That's still pretty good. Um, so. We could say that the majority of 13-year-olds could learn JavaScript and Processing.js on Khan Academy, according to these stats, right? We could say, all of you who raised your hands, that seems like a reasonable thing to conclude. Let's just go with that for our vision of the world, all right? Uh, so we have our vision, right? So they learn JavaScript in seventh grade. Then they practice it. They make games. Uh, for the last month, everybody on Khan Academy has been making every single Flappy Bird clone you could possibly imagine. It's like Flappy Bird in Frozen Land, Flappy Bird in Hell, everywhere. Um, <laughs> so they get comfortable. They use it for fun stuff. Um, and then in high school, that's where it gets interesting. They could actually start using JavaScript to explore other areas. Because that's the whole point. With reading, writing, arithmetic, you learn it so you can explore all the other areas that we then go on to learn, right? So how, what would happen if we added on JavaScript? So I found some examples right here with art. These people made, this is just from Khan Academy. People made these uh, examples to show linear perspective. Um, you, with English, somebody made this English project, and they presented it to their class. And you can see in the comments they got really happy because everybody really liked their presentation. And they were just they just put their story in an animated form. Uh, literature, this uh, local high school teacher did this project where everybody uh, drew pictures of the book covers of books they wrote. History, you could make a timeline. Um, physics, you could actually really learn physics using programming examples. And I'm actually porting over this uh, book called The Nature of Code right now over to Khan Academy. And it's this really cool book, which is this way of learning physics via JavaScript. Um, and uh, it's awesome. Uh, so you know, teachers could incorporate this as extra credit or whatever. Um, or maybe it could even be a required course, and you could assume it's part of the curriculum. Uh, so now you can see you can learn JavaScript. We can use JavaScript to explore other topics. And then maybe you go off and major in computer science. Maybe you go major in biology and you use your programming skills. Or maybe you just go off in the world and you happen to understand the world better and you're just a more productive human being. And you can use these programming skills to program a spreadsheet with your household budget or something like that, right? But it's incredibly valuable. 
Um, and we could you know, generalize this vision and teach different types of programming. We could teach unplugged programming or block-based programming or HTML programming. I only talk about JavaScript here because this is a JavaScript conference and I'm sucking up. Um, but uh, there's tons of other different types of programming. And maybe different types of programming are better at different ages, right? And that's something we have to figure out. Um, and there's all these things we could teach besides just programming that have to do with computers. Uh, but we only had, I only had 10 minutes and I already went over. So when you go you know, around the conference today, just think about what would it be like if everybody learned JavaScript in grade school? What should they learn? How much could they learn? What could they do with that knowledge? How could we make JavaScript easier to learn? And how could we make people feel incredibly empowered now that they knew that? Uh, so I have some ideas, but I'm here to find out about your ideas. Thanks.